So what will church look like in 80 years? Fascinating question. You know, I think, uh, <laughs> I thought we were gonna start with the easy stuff. <laughs> okay, I, I, I won't be here. In 80 years. Well, uh, I hope we're not all just uh, sending holograms. In how many years? 80. 80 years. Uh, everyone, all of us, we here get to be a prophet for a moment. The model of church we're working on right now is unsustainable. I don't think it'll last 80 years. It's a model that tries to to put on a structure called the congregation way too much pressure to do things it's simply not been designed to do for centuries. But John Wesley worked out of a different model. It was a model that understood that the church is primarily a network at the structural level. It was a network of a congregation doing things congregations could do plus other forms of Christian community that focused much more intently on discipling people, on sending them in mission in, in Christ's name, and on holding them accountable, not only for what they did, but for how they were growing in holiness of heart and life. Um, I think the winds of the Spirit are blowing all across this world, and I think this insatiable need for God and the holy is embedded deeply within all of us. There will be a church. The question in my mind is, will there be a United Methodist Church? We have to make the case for why Jesus, why Wesleyan theology, why the Methodist movement. My grandmother, were she alive today, I think would be amazed that uh, there are actually people tweeting when they're in church about the sermon and um, pastors from the pulpit tweeting. Um, I think that would blow her mind. What will church look like in 80 years? I'm a big believer that right now we're in a time of real ferment and change, not just with the United Methodist denomination, but with Christianity as a whole. I think we're at a time where things are being reassessed and uh, new New things are being tried. Well, I, I like science, so it, I struggle to think about 80 years from now even, how we'll, how we'll communicate, how we'll be. Uh, I have some fantasies about the kind of glasses that allow you to see uh, people and talk to them internationally. <laughs> Star Trek? <laughs> well, <laughs> To be honest, I think we may go back to more of the Wesleyan model of the, of the small group. Uh, we may have fewer uh, brick and mortar churches and more house churches. Uh, those are uh, a little bit more uh, manageable on a global scale. A proliferation of, of uh, family churches, of churches that are, out, that are not contained to buildings. So the leader needs to decide which which vision of the future are we going to look at? Which one are we going to follow? And the leader can help the congregation actually do that. So what makes uh, transforming existing congregations so difficult? One word, inertia. inertia. You know, I was in a local church not terribly long ago, and it's a, it's a small local church in a rural community. And I just happened to say to one of the matriarchs of the local church, so what's the future of this church? And she Pause, she lowered her head and she said, the future of this local church is to be here until they put me in the grave in the cemetery out behind the church. When we're talking about um, change in a congregation, it's really difficult because everybody that's sitting there right now has some reason that they like the way it is right now. 
it is comfortable. The General Board of Discipleship is working very hard with partners uh, to help the, lo the local churches actually transform themselves. And so who are our partners? The bishops, the conference staff, the district superintendents, local church pastors, local church laity. Uh, we're working with anybody that we can find to uh, actually engage the question, how do we help transform existing congregations? I think um, a vital congregation has as its heart prayer. And so a vital church has built into its very fabric a rich prayer life. My biggest question is really about our current trajectory toward individualization and customization. I want my iTunes, my playlist. It's hard to imagine how a community is going to live and work together and worship together and pray together uh, with that kind of particularity. But I'm, I'm confident that the Spirit can work it out. Uh, GBOD has a mission to work with leaders to help their leadership be such that their congregation becomes more healthy and more vital through what they do. We hear the story of one church and we put it out there for other churches to learn and see from them. We are in many ways a broker of information and learning so that we take what we hear and give it to others so that they know it as well. That is a more transforming way that church needs to think. The pastors and the leadership teams and the whole congregation, how we can change ourselves first to change the whole culture of the church and the whole culture of the community. I, I think uh, not to change because we fear failure is crazy. So if we pursue a vision of church that ultimately is about discipling people in the way of Jesus, in 80 years, I think we may see fewer congregations, but they'll all be stronger. They'll be more capable to do what it is congregations do well, and they'll also be committed to being strong partners with other groups, mid-size and small, where discipleship is happening in a, in a very powerful way.